problem, user, then product. You have to first understand the problem you're trying to solve and then the people who have the problem that you're trying to solve before you then go build something. What I tend to see and what people tend to seem to think is that it's about having a product idea first. That's why everyone's constantly talking about startup ideas. But when they say startup idea, what they really mean is startup product instead of startup problem. If you want to go down this idea route, that is build something first and then try to solve a problem with what you've built, you're most likely going to spend a lot of time and energy building something that nobody wants because you have no idea what problem you're trying to solve. It's like not knowing the building you're trying to create because you don't know who is eventually going to use that building. So you end up creating, I don't know, skyscraper for people who simply needed a small tent because they're looking to go camping. They're not going to go camping in a skyscraper. A good number of startups start from personal problems. People have a form of the problem they're trying to solve. And then they try to see if it's a general problem that exists amongst a large group of people. And then they go talk to a specific group of people who have the problem and they think would be good early adopters for a product. That is the way you want to go, not come up with a product and then go see if it actually solves the problem, a problem or any problem. The other thing you really need to understand is that just because you have a product does not mean it solves the problem you're trying to solve, nor is it a reflection of the lack of need for a product like yours. If you launch a product and it's broken, it has a bad user experience, it's rough around the edges, in this day and age, you're probably not going to get the user acceptance that you're looking for because it seems like people are now more used to polished products that work well and they don't care. They don't care if you're a startup. Maybe back in the day, you could have gotten away with a very bare bones experience. Then Craigslist, for instance, it still looks like what it used to look like when they first launched. But if you were to launch something like that today, you're probably not going to get the widespread adoption that you are looking for in your product. You probably won't even get early adopter interest. And by interest, I mean actually, well, people paying for your product unless you're not going that route. So you need to be very patient with your product development process. You can't think in terms of grand features. You want to slowly build, especially if you're a small team, slowly build and build very well so that you can have a product experience that really does impress the user because of how much thought you put into creating an experience that solves the problem you're trying to solve. And for a specific group of people, notice that I said problem and people first. You need to understand those two things before you go develop this product, or else you're going to develop a very nice user experience that does not solve the problem and does not cater to a specific group of people. But once you have those two things in place, then you can create a product experience that does solve the problem, does try to solve the problem, and does act as a solution for a specific group of people who have the problem. Point is, you actually need to focus on product experience now. You can't just launch a broken MVP and expect user feedback to go your way. You're probably not even going to get any sort of adoption. That is something that we actually tried with Ricci. I thought that we could just launch an MVP that was very bare bones, showed functionality, but was very bare bones, did not look like a polished professional product. It looked usable, People could have used it to solve the problem. They just didn't because user expectations are so different now. So that's those are just two product insights that I think are really, they're, they're talked about, but they're not really contextualized. People think in terms of very vacuum-like concepts when it comes to startup concepts. They don't really think about context. Like they don't think in terms of, I need to solve a problem first and then for a particular group of people before then I build before then building a product because what they tend to see is building a product first. They, they tend to see product mostly. They don't really tend to see problem. And I get that. You don't really see problems physically. Most problems are just conceptual, but product you can see, right? So if you build product, then you're making progress. Well, that's not true. You could be building product that does not solve a problem that no one is ever going to use, in which case you're just wasting time. And the second product insight that you need to polish user experience. 
that came from just seeing the kinds of user reactions I was getting from the product that we were building at Ricci. We were, solve, we, we were solving a very painful problem. We're solving a very painful problem for a group of people who really do care about having this problem solved, so students. And we've identified more specific groups of people within this group of people who really do want this problem solved, but they have not used our product as well as we would have wanted them to use it. And it seems like it's because we have a very, we still have a very basic, very rough user experience. And that's because we developed very quickly. Now we're opting for developing slowly. We're still launching product fast, but we're just being very careful with what we put on our spec. And as a result, I think that's going to develop far more progress than developing things very quickly, launching, and then seeing if people use a rough and I would say almost incomplete user experience.